think if a 15-year-old who didn't know what a pancreas was could find a new way to detect pancreatic cancer, I'm pretty sure we can find a new way to disseminate our knowledge. My name is Jack Andreka, and I'm a 17-year-old who used Wikipedia to develop a new way to detect pancreatic, ovarian, and lung cancer that costs three cents and takes five minutes to run. So a lot of people, when I say I'm a cancer researcher, kind of give me the suspicious look like, aren't you 17? And I actually started doing cancer research when I was 14. And I got interested in the field because a close family friend who was like an uncle to me passed away from pancreatic cancer. And then I found that there's really no way to detect pancreatic cancer. So I went online and using online sources such as Wikipedia, found that really there's no way of currently detecting pancreatic cancer. So I set out on this wild adventure trying to find a new way to detect pancreatic cancer and that blossomed into me becoming a cancer researcher. Once I discovered through Wikipedia articles that 85% of all pancreatic cancers are diagnosed late, when someone has less than a 2% chance of survival and the current test is a 60-year-old technique that's incredibly outdated but also incredibly expensive, $800 per test, missing 30% of all cancers, I knew I had to do something. And so I set out at age 13, armed with high school biology, to solve how are we going to detect pancreatic cancer. And I had to essentially get a crash course in molecular biology, material science, and a couple of other fields I had no idea about. I essentially just used the internet, especially Wikipedia, to get this crash course in all of these fields. And then I stumbled across another thing in my Wikipedia adventures, and that was single-walled carbon nanotubes. And I was just sitting in uh, my biology class, actually, reading about these nanotubes, while we were learning about antibodies, which are essentially molecules that only react with one specific protein, in this case, that cancer biomarker. And I thought, if I combine these two things, then I'd have a substance that would only react with one specific protein, but also would change how electricity flows through it based on the amount of protein present due to these carbon nanotubes. And that's how I used Wikipedia to make a new way to detect pancreatic cancer. One of the largest problems for scientists, particularly young scientists like myself, is something called a scientific paywall. And this is essentially when you're a scientist, you publish articles in a bunch of scientific journals. That's how you get like your results out and that's how you build prestige. However, the vast majority, 90% of all these journals, have paywalls on their articles. So that means when you want to read them, it costs $35 per article or several thousand dollars for a subscription. And because of this, a lot of young scientists simply can't get access to articles they need to do science. And it's even become a problem for not only 15-year-old cancer researchers, but Harvard University, who said they simply, simply can't sustain the number of subscriptions they have. What we've essentially engineered with these uh, paywalls is we've created a fundamental barrier between the people and science because the general public, they want to learn what these scientific paywalls are. Is there a tax on the curiosity and creativity of youth and the general public? Only 0.008% of the world's population, that's it. Those are the only people who can access scientific knowledge in peer-reviewed journals. And so that's like essentially taking all of the population of London, randomly select 80 people off the street, those are the only people who can read scientific articles for everyone else, too bad to be you. And but imagine if we could live in a knowledge democracy where what you look like, age or gender, doesn't apply. Where whether you're from Mexico to Malaysia, from China to Cambodia, whether you're a billionaire or living on less than a dollar a day, you could access these scientific articles. Because science shouldn't be a luxury and knowledge shouldn't be a commodity. It should be a basic human right. And the thing about Wikipedia that makes it so great is that in order to read an article there, you don't have to pay a cent and there's no advertising or anything like that. So that's why Wikipedia is such a crucial part of a young scientist's career and even established scientist's career. People should definitely care about Wikipedia because it allows for almost the democratization of innovation. It allows anyone, regardless of where they're from, who they are, what they look like, it doesn't matter they can access that information and come up with a great idea.